Hello, uh, good afternoon. Uh, we're back with our uh, Earthquake Soil Structure Interaction Series. Uh, it's uh, October 16th, it's uh, 2 p.m., uh, 2.08 p.m. in Davis, California. My name is Boris Jeremic. Uh, I'm here in Davis. Uh, last time we recorded was I was in Switzerland. Uh, today we have uh, uh, a presenter, Heshan Wang. Hello, Heshan. Hi. And then we have Dr. Han Yang who was well, presenting and will be presenting. And we have a guest student, uh, Yu Sheng. Yu Sheng is from, uh, from, uh, from Shanghai and he's visited with us for, for a while and he'll be here for another six months or so. So with that, uh, today we'll continue our recording session uh, with, uh, with a calibration of stochastic elastic material parameters for wave propagation. And uh, I give it away to Heshan. Heshan, so you can start sharing your screen Okay. And we can go ahead with the lecture, please. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go like this, this way. Yes, but make it one slide. Uh, yeah, make, yeah, make it uh, one, like, uh, one one slide uh, screen so that we don't see the other slides after that. So, so, so can you see my screen one slide? No, no, no. We no, no. We see also we see two slides at, at a time. So go to the first. Uh, go to the top all the way to the top. Oh really? I I I think I didn't share the right one. Okay. Now, 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 oh, yeah, okay, now right? that's right. Now, that's right. Yeah. Now it's okay. a single slide. Yes. Yes. Good. Yeah. Okay, All right. Good. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Please. Yeah. 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 So thanks, uh, Professor Jeremy, for introducing me. And so today we will continue our talks on a calibration of stochastic elastic material parameters. So in our previous lectures, we have talked about some, you know, theoretical aspects on the, you know, stochastic finite element method and how that uh, apply to, you know, wave propagation or structure, you know, seismic risk analysis. So today we're going to talk about some practical aspects, you know, starting from how do we define a single, you know, stochastic elastic material parameters. So, um, so this is the parameter. Uh, model that we're going to use is a you know simple uh, you know 1D stochastic elastic material, but uh, here we try to consider the uncertainty. You know here you know the the stress, the Young's modulus, and strain are both uncertain. We denote uh, we use the theta to denote the uncertainty, and uh, you know uh, you, when you have the uncertainty, it can either it can either be a single random variable or it can also be a random field. So for example, your Young's modulus at a different layer of your soil it can be an uncertain random field. So it's also a function of the special coordinate x. So uh, in real easy, uh, we have uh, such a DSL command to, for you to define uh, such a, uh, uh, you know, a single, uh, such, such a 1D stochastic elastic material. So this is the DSL command we have. So here you can see that you need to define basically three input. Uh, first one uh, is the material number ID. And then the second one is the, the called the uncertain elastic modulus, which is defined as a random uh, variable. You need to provide a random variable ID that is associated with the uh, material. And also a very important is the unit that you need to specify. So basically whatever the random var variable you have input here is a dimensionless. And you're going to multiply this uh, random variable values with this unit to be your Young's modulus. So it's very important that you need to predefine uh, such a you know, uh, a random variable. And also you need to make sure you already represent your random variable with Hermite polynomial chaos. You can go back to our previous lectures to know more about this, uh, you know, theoretical aspects on the polynomial chaos. And uh, so we're gonna talk about how do we define, you know, such a random variable. So if you only have a single, you know, el linear, uh, linear elastic material, which is uncertain, then you only needed to define a single random variable. And for that, you only need to define the marginal distribution of this single random variable. So uh, in, in real easy, we have provide you know, different types of the marginal distribution. You can, you can make it as a Gaussian, log Lomo, gamma, or Weibo distribution. Um, so you know, for, for, for example, for Young's modulus, we would prefer to define it as a log Lomo or gamma so that it can be you know, positive definite. If you, if, you put, if you assign it as a Gaussian distribution, if you use the relatively large you know, uh, coefficient of variance, then you might, you might have some tiny bit of probability to get the negative stiffness. So this is just a, a point you need to be careful. Yeah, hello, uh, Just a comment. So, so in, in fact, I mean, anytime you, you define it as a Gaussian, you will have some probability of going into negative stiffness. And that's usually not a good idea. Even though Gaussian distributions are simple and more efficient, they're not very physical, at least for this, for material parameters. So it's really a good idea to have it as log normal or gamma or, or viable. Remember, viable comes is the only distribution that actually comes from a, 
from test physical tests anyway uh, on on yeah. metallic properties. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah. So if you only have a single material, then you can define a random variable, you know, that follows such a distribution, whatever comes from your calibration. And then you need to do a one command to 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 perform the Hermite polynomial chaos expansion uh, of such a random variable. So this is the uh, DSL command uh, in real easy that we provide for you to uh, to do the Hermite polynomial chaos for a single uh, a random variable. So here you need to provide the uh, random variable ID that you're going to do the expansion and also the order of the polynomial chaos. So uh, generally, you know, the, the higher order you go, you know, the more accuracy you will, ga you will gain. But, uh, you know, on the other hand, the computational expense might also, you know, go up. So it's really a balance, you know, for you to choose a proper order. On one hand, you, you want to capture the main distribution characteristic, but on the other, other hand, you want to keep your computational expense manageable. So, um, and, and it's always good to check, you know, uh, the, the distribution synthesized from your polynomial chaos result and the, with your input distribution so that you can know, you know, you already have a, a large, in, a good enough number of the order of the polynomial chaos. So, so here is the, uh, specifically the DSL that we provide in real easy for you to define, you know, either a Gaussian random variable or a log Lomma distribution, Gaussian uh, random variable, or gamma distribution, and a Weibo distribution. So they have these different parameters to define associated with, associated with the different distributions. You can, you know, reference to our uh, uh, DSL manual to uh, to look at the uh, definition of these parameters that, that you need to provide. And uh, so so here I just uh, show you a simple example that we uh, use to define a you know a single material which is uncertain. Uh, so here we just uh, define a single random variable, which is log Lomma distribution with mean 155. Uh, uh, by the way, here the 155 does not have any units. We're gonna spe specify the unit here with this one, with the elastic modular, uh, modular scale unit. And we, 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 we say the standard deviation, which is the, you know, the coefficient of variance is 30%. So basically the standard deviation will be 0 0.3 times 155. So professor, do you have any questions? No, 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 I'm just, oh. I'm just okay. following. Okay, yeah, so, and then, uh, so the, the ones we define such a, a random variable, so the second step, we're going to do the polynomial chaos. So here, we just uh, uh, do polynomial chaos expansion for such a random variable with the polynomial chaos up to order three. So once you define uh, such a random variable and you already do the polynomial chaos expanded, then you can use this random variable number one to define your material parameter. So basically, that, that's how we do the, uh, to define a certain material. Uh, yeah, I, yes, uh, I have a quick, quick, quick question here. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I understand correctly, so in the first command, uh, mm -hmm. you, let's say you define a, a mean for, for, for the variable to be one, uh, 155. Uh, yeah. And then in the third command, uh, you, on top of that 155, you said that you have to modulus scale unit to be one mega Pascal. Does yeah, that that's mean true. The, uh, the mean elastic modulus to be 155 mega Pascal? Yes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can also put a scale factor here in okay. the unit. Okay. Yeah, like like you put it here too. Then you do, the mean will be you know three hundred. You know forty. Yeah. Yes. Uh, three hundred ten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. But it's cool. it's a good idea to keep it at one, just just so there's no confusion. You keep it at one. Whatever mean you have, you just provide the unit one megapascal or kilopascal or whatever. D d don't multiply. I mean, it's a good idea to keep it simple. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, so as I mentioned that here, you need to check, you know, uh, whether your polynomial chaos expansion is good or not, right? So here we have compare, you know, this is the exact distribution, you know, Gaussian distribution. And the, the red line is, you know, when we go to up to order three, what do we get synthesized from the polynomial chaos? So you can see here, you know, we have pretty good. So we think order three is enough. So then, you know, once you have defined such a material, then you can do a, you know, a simple material test. So here I just show you the, you know, the stress and the strain response, you know, for, for, for a simple, you know, linear elastic on certain material, you will have, you know, just a linear mean, but also the standard deviation will linearly vary along with the strain increment, you know. And uh, so, but it can be more complicated, you know, in engineering uh, practice, you might have, you know, multiple layers of the material and they may have multiple random variables and they are correlated, right? So in that case, you need to define, you know, multiple random variables. In other words, it's a random field to, uh, you know, when you have this, uh, you know, multiple material parameters. So 
in, in that case, you, you, don't, you, you not only need to define the marginal distribution for each of the layer, but also you need to define the correlation structure of the different layer. So in real easy, we have provided you know, several different types of the correlation structure that you can use to characterize your engineering you know, correlation structure. For example, we, we have the exp exponential correlation structure, the triangular correlation, and the exponentially dumped cosine correlation. You know, they can, they can be also more, uh, you know, if you have, you know, some other more, you know, that's for you to use. Yeah. And uh, so once, once you have those correlation structure, now uh, in order to define your material parameters, you not only need to perform the polynomial chaos expansion to capture the marginal distribution, but also the kahuna loiv expansion to to car, to car, uh, to capture the correlation structure. So in other words, now you need to you need to use the uh, we have a new DSL command that is to uh, probabilistically discretize your random field, which is the Hermite polynomial chaos kahuna loiv expansion to random field. So so now you 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 need to uh, specify not only the order of the polynomial chaos, but also the the dimension of the polynomial chaos you want to use to capture such a correlation structure. So, so this this is uh, also very important before you, before you use this uh, you know random field to define your material parameters. You also need to perform this uh, probabilistic uh, probabilistic discretization. Yeah, and uh, so so here is the. Uh, so here is the, the the step that the, that you need to follow to define a, a random field uh, of the material parameters. So first step, still you need to define the marginal distribution of the individual random variables as as what we mentioned before. And now, uh, and other than that, you need to define the correlation structure. As I mentioned, that you know there are different types of the DSL command. Uh, to define you know different types of correlation structure, you can refer to our DSL for more information. And once you define you know those uh, random field with correlation structure and also the random variables, you need to add the random variables to the random field just 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 so that the program knows you are associating you know different random random variables to such a random field. So and so you need to add the random variables to the random field, and uh, then you need to. Find then, 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 then you need you can you can perform this uh, expansion to do the probabilistic discretization, and then you can go ahead to define your material uh, uh, stochastic elastic material. So here I just show you a, a simple example. So say I have uh, four layers of the material. Now, you know they are all kind of like a, um, a log lama distribution, and you know with different you know mean and the different you know coefficient of variance. And uh, so I, I assume, you know, we know the correlation structure of these uh, different four layers to be a, uh, you know, uh, exponential correlation with a correlation length 10 meters. And uh, so how do we going to define a random field to uh, quantify such a problem? So, so this, basically this is, a, yeah, yes, professor. I'm sorry, you didn't want me to go back, go back one slide. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so, so these are four layers and each layer is going to be discretized into number of stochastic finite elements. And each of these yeah. finite elements is actually going to, receive material pro material properties uh, uncertain material properties that you defined previously and then and then yes go ahead yeah i mean yeah. what i'm trying so to say here, is that this is no, these are you... not elements these, the, each of these materials is going to be discretized in number of elements and each yeah, element yeah. is going to have its own just like you're showing in this example yes go ahead yeah yeah, that's true. Yeah, so so basically, uh, here the the one of the main uh, main difference that you, you that you need to be careful is that so now if you want to define a random variable for random field, you need to specify the location information for this random variable. So for example, here the random variable number one is uh, at one meters because the first uh, you know the first layer is sorry I didn't so actually the thickness of the first layer is two meters. So essentially we are assuming you know there is a sampling point of the first layer uh, of this random variable. And the second layer, and then the second run of variable is at four meters. You know, essentially, essentially, you know, when you define the stochastic finite element, all the element at the layer number one will will be associated with this this single run of variable. So yeah, and similarly for layer three and layer number four. So you need to provide this location information because this location information is very important for us to uh, generate generate the correlation structure. So so once you have the you know for example, here we define a random field 
with correlation lens as 10 meters. So you, you have this correlation lens and you have different you know, location information. Then you can, you can know how those run of arrival, they are correlated with each other. Yeah. So this location information is very important. If you only have a single material, you don't need to provide you know, any, this location information because anywhere the same, you know, we, we don't need to, uh, you to specify those material location can, information. Can I ask so a then, question? Can, can uh, I ask you a Yes, Professor. Can I ask, I'm yeah. sorry for interrupting. Yeah. Uh, but you can also have a di uh, different uh, different, uh, different correlation lengths for, for different layers. Then you would define multiple. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, then you need to find multiple runner variables, yes. right? Yes, yes. That, that's why we need to make clear, you know, what runner variable is associated yes. to runner field because yes. we might have also multiple runner field. Yeah. Yes. That, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. So you associate the different runner variable this runner field, and then this correlation structure will automatically, you know, apply to those runner variables, and then you need to perform this uh, Hermit polynomial chaos coupling logic expansion to this runner variable. So here we have been using, you know. Uh, dimension four and the order four uh, to capture uh, those uh, those uh, those uh, uh, distrib uh, distribution and also the correlation. And then once you define, once you uh, finish the definition of your random field and the random variables, you can go ahead to define four different materials with the stochastic, you know, modulus quantified by random variable one, two, three, and four. And also you have the same units. Yeah. So yeah, once you once you define uh, this. You can go. You, you need to go ahead. You can again go ahead to check. You know the, whether you you characterize your marginal distribution, and then now the, the 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 your key point is whether you can characterize the correlation structure very well, right? So so for example, in this case, if you choose a lower dimension, then you cannot you know capture those correlation structure very well. I think in previous our theoretical lectures, we also show how those different dimensions will influence your correlation structure. Yeah, and uh, uh, so uh, uh, a main point is that well, you, this is sort of I shouldn't say trial and error, but it is in a sense you you make an assumption, you start from lower end of the order and, and you know end of dimension, and then you check, and then you see how it works, and if it works okay, you keep it that way. If it doesn't, if it's not good enough, you increase, and and this is how it's done. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So yeah, so basically yeah, with that, uh, I I think yeah, we you already know how to do how to define uh, you know elastic stochastic material, and uh, yeah, thanks for your attention. Oh, thank you. So 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 next next we'll we'll actually talk about uh, some next I mean next lecture we'll talk about how do we analyze these and then we're gonna go into actual weight propagation, yeah, uh, and so on. But uh, this essentially concludes this lecture. So thank you very much for your attention and we'll see you next time. Let me yeah. just...